everybody man i'm your host ivy and you're sparking up with vans and weed make sure you like comment and subscribe and hit that post notifications button man today we got sutra outside with us well we ain't outside today but we in the house <laughs> we in the house how y'all doing chilling good 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 really good hungover <laughs> hungover what y'all be drinking what's your what's your preferred drink um well, recently I've been drinking old fashions. Okay, my mama just got on them. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday was an old fashioned day for me too. Old fashioned. Yeah. I was uh, I was drinking whatever whatever the people gave me. You know? Hey, no, it be like that though. <laughs> We've been going out for cocktails a lot in different places, so we've mm -hmm. been a lot of different stuff. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. See, me personally, if I'm going to the store, give me a drink. Mm. I'm buying Hennessy. The Heen, the Heen team, and, 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 and niggas act like, man, we was drinking Hennessy back in woo woo. Nigga, I'm still drinking Hennessy. Still drink, yeah. It's consistent. I, you're a consistent person. It yeah, seems like. Look, I like the way it make me feel. Mm -hmm. I try other liquors. Don't get me wrong. There's some good shit out there. You know, everybody be on Casamigos, little Don yeah. Julio. You know the hype. Right. I'm gonna stick with my drink. Facts. At the end of the day, you Big know. Facts. I feel that. For sure, I'm for broke. sure. You I'm know. Uh, hello, if it ain't broke, so for all you hating niggas out there, they be hating <laughs> my Hennessy. My job business. Cause as soon as I bring out the bottle, y'all niggas want some. So, you know, they talk all that shit today. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure, man. Um, let's get into it. Um. Let's uh, we'll eventually get into uh, Sutro, but let's talk about Afterthought. Um, let's talk communal healing, man. Your de your debut album released yep. last year, right? Yep. In July. Was it July? I believe you. Yeah, I think it was July. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, when you move in, hey, hey, look, you don't yeah. even remember for real. Yeah. Uh, a thirteen track project. Um, yep. That sounds right. You also uh. Not too long ago, just got off the South America tour, I did. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Last year, you also toured in Port, uh, L.A., Portland, Phoenix, Philly, D.C., New York, uh, and Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Just talk about that, yeah. the, the project, and how did the people respond, I, you know, out the country and out the state? Um, it was it was tight. Uh, I, I didn't expect, it was my first album, you know, so... I wasn't like expecting, I didn't have no expectations, you know, when releasing. But it was, you know, I made it to be performed. So my, you know, my goal was like to perform it as much as possible. Right. So I set up as many shows as possible with as many people as I, I could. And, you know, that was the best way for me to sell the album. Cause I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like when I started doing music, I was hella into like, Okay, well, how do I promote it online? Whoop, doop, doop, you know what I mean? And then, like, I was like, some of this stuff is kind of phony, you know what I mean? And then, like, when we as family out of group started throwing shows, I was like, all right, this is tight. Like, you could see the people, you know what I mean? Like, you could see who's supporting you, you know? And you can see who's supporting you multiple times and, and that type of shit. So I was like, all right, I'm finna do the whole album like that. Like, it's like, I wasn't really chipping on promoting it or making even visual content for it. But more just like, all right, how many people can I like look them in the eye and perform for them and then sell them the, the CD and we'll do it, you know? So it was cool. It was, it was very well received, like, you know. And Europe, you know, fucks with me more than America. It's always like honest. that for artists. Why is that? Because they have more resources to be happy. Mm. <laughs> Talk about it. Like, like you know what I'm saying like like they have social services and shit so like they they just have time to appreciate art you feel me like even in other places in America like when I was on tours like you realized in the bay we're all broke like even if you uh, even if you what? got money you're oh, broke yeah. you know what I'm saying so it's like I was in I was in like rural places like western Massachusetts and I did a show for like 10 people and all those people buy hoodies and CDs mm -hmm. and shit because it's like, even if they don't got money, it's like their rent is kind of low and they're like, this is a thing that's coming to my town. Let me support it type of thing. Right. You know what I mean? Like in the Bay, I feel like 
a combination of like poverty and and high cost of living plus our like pimp culture and our like man i'm, I'm never gonna let a nigga get one over me type right. of shit so yeah. it's like oh 40 let me finesse this nigga down to 20 for the hoodie right oh the ticket the like, ticket price nigga, it's 40. you know what i mean and it's like it's like we see that as like disrespectful to pay full price Whereas yeah. other places are like, oh, it's 40? I'm going to give you 60. I loved your show. You right. know what I mean? Like, That's crazy you, know you say saying? that because like, we really like that. And when I think about it, damn, that's sad as fuck. Like, you niggas, I get it being broke because, I mean, yeah. shit. It's like that in the Bay. Yeah. But don't be flexing online with all the jewelry and all the money. Yeah. And then you come to me asking me. Can I lower the price? Right. Y'all don't go to nobody else establishment asking right, to lower the price. Right. That's insane to me. Right. And it's, you know, it's like, I get it. It, it. Like, I have that mindset sometimes, too. I'm like, oh, bro, like, you know, them niggas should be fucking with me. Like, whatever. But it's like, when you really think about a grand scheme, it's like, bro, like, it's their business. You know right. what I mean? And, like, it's dope. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's the big thing is, like, a lot of niggas is, like, phony everywhere. Yeah. So people is like, oh, I'm not, I'm trying to, whatever. But it's like, bro, if it's dope shit, support the shit. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. it's not even supporting. It's like, you, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm out of town in some other place, even in the middle of nowhere, I'm like, oh, it's 30 to get in the club. Well, shit, we, you know, it's 30 to get in the club. It's like, that's the same shit. Like, yeah. a show is a show. It's like, just pay, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have a good time. You know right, what I mean? exactly, exactly. That's a fact, man. I'm glad you said that shit. Now that I think about it, it really yeah. would be like that. For sure, for but sure. Yeah, shout bro. out to Europe. My biggest fan base is in Austria. So, shout that's out to That's what's up. That's super dope. Are you really? For real? You look, yeah. You know who else was Austrian? Somebody bad. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, but that shit is super dope, though, just being the Bay Area artist and being out, like, out the country. We don't have yeah. a lot of people like that. That's actually, and you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you, and it's not like you hella, hella big, yeah. but you're doing it. Yeah. So, nah, that shit is super dope, man. Yeah, um, I, I, I encourage everybody to try and get out. I feel like, yeah. I feel like people just don't think they can. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you gotta just try it, you know what I mean? Like, right. you gotta just go do it, fuck with somebody. Like, we're so insulated that, bro, like, people don't people don't be meeting people from the Bay Area right. because we all are here, you know what I mean? But it's like, you go out there and it's like, they fuck with us, you know what I mean? They fuck with, like, the Bay Area-ism and, and sound and all that shit. So, right, right. You know? And it's like, that's how you get bigger here, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't start getting notoriety here <laughs> until like I was out the way and then people were like oh damn you really got some ocean like let me book you in the, you know right, what I mean right. like yeah yeah you know what I'm saying it's like sure. that's proof of concept you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. so yeah man yeah. the proof is in the pudding man I mean shit if you could do it a lot of niggas can man so, right. look get out the bay exactly. bro get out the bay it's so much more to see I try to tell everybody that, especially people from my hood. I'm like, bro, y'all stuck on a block, but y'all ain't seen nothing else. Right. Like, niggas ain't never been been to Disneyland. Like, right. come on, man. Like, that shit, right. I was like, come, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Unless you realize how small this shit is, like, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly, yeah. super small. Um, What was it like touring, you know, in these different states and seeing different parts of the world, you know, sharing your art? Yeah, it was amazing, like, that's like, that's that's all I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. is like create art and then share art. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, to be able to, and it makes you realize, like, you know, like we're all underpaid. Like we all, we work. Like we probably work seventy hours a work week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then plus overtime. Mm -hmm. And so we're underpaid, underappreciated, all that shit. Y'all are too, you know what yeah, I mean? Y'all have thanks. a whole platform that's pushing the culture forward. But when you go to other places, you travel, you play your art, like you realize like at the end of the day, like that shit matters. Like if you do like finances, it's just irrelevant other places. Right. You know what I mean? Cause that's just a made up thing. Like money is just made up. Mm -hmm. But it's like music is something that's like, oh, you play music? we like music do you want to play the music here you know what i mean and and other cultures that are still like have that appreciation it's like art is actually the number one thing because you can't like replace it it's the last thing you can replace like you can replace you know, feel me like every other job but you know besides the arts and by that i mean also like food and, and all that shit because that's like what hits your soul and your mind and shit so it's like okay. traveling other places i realize like yeah like 
You know what I'm saying? It's like that's 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 what matters in this world. Cause mm -hmm. and then when I'm like, damn, should I just go do this? I'm like, nah, cause it's like COVID, nigga. Like when COVID happened, it was like, what did everybody start doing? Everyone, respectfully to everyone, but everyone's like, I have a brand, I have a da-da-da. Because -da -da. when yeah. you have, when you, when it's when it's time to be had, humans will make art. Right. So we're just doing what every other human wants to do. Mm -hmm. we're, and we're just sharing that gift. You know right. what I'm saying? So that's that's what we're all doing, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a fact, that's a fact, man. How do you go about funding your own tours? Uh, how do I go about it? Yeah. Um, like, are you working know. nine to five? I, are you, just, you know what I'm saying? Huh? <laughs> A any any uh anyone out there who wants to Venmo me, my Venmo, uh, <laughs> my Venmo is at its AFT. Um, that's the first step right there. Um, I don't know. We're like, I feel like we've been talking about that for like the tour that we're trying to go on. It's like you, it's just like, how do you fund living in the Bay Area? To me, it's like you gotta figure out a thousand ways to get it. Like, Hell yeah. you know, you like ideally, it's like okay, someone gives us. 50 grand to do it, da, 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 da. but it really it's like, all right, we could get 100 here, 200 here, like, let's, we're we gonna do a little pop up here before a show and get 100 here, and then we, you know, we gonna uh, push the merch like this and whatever, and it's like, you just do that, like, you gotta, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you, instead of thinking, oh, one big payday, you think, how can I get little bags everywhere so it adds up type of thing, you know what I mean? And so that's how I did it, and then. You know, uh, out the country, it's like grants and stuff like that. You could you could get grants and government funding, okay. especially in small places. You know what I mean, where where no one is showing up. Like that's the like the most cracking shows I did. Like that's how I got hella fans of Austria. Is like Austria, like no one goes there. You know what I mean? But it is it. You know, it's a major European country with hella right. money. So if you're willing to go there, you know what I mean, and set up a show, you, you do some shit, they'll, get, they'll pay you to do that. You know what I mean? It, because no one's going there. Like, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like any, right. any American artist that's big enough to get to Europe is doing London and Amsterdam and Paris. You know what I mean? Like right. lit cities. Mm -hmm. So like hella places that I was going, like Belfast, Northern Ireland, and like Linz, Austria is like, no one is going no american artist artists. yeah exactly that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying it's like no one has and anyone who's big enough to go out to europe is not even considering going to those places you right. feel me in the same way that like and he put me on game for this hella is like everyone wants to go to frisco or sac but it's like no one's trying to go to arcada or santa rosa but it's like there's hella people there mm -hmm. who want live music too so right. it's the same thing it's like if you could find a way to get into that market mm -hmm. they'll pay and they'll probably buy merch they'll probably not enough because they're like i don't know when you're coming back and yeah this is the first thing i've seen that's not like our local garage band right that plays at the bar every mm -hmm. friday you know in two years right right no that shit makes sense bro i'm glad you broke it down like that too just in case somebody want you know what i'm saying yeah. like get a chance to do that shit for yeah. real because you're right a lot of people think they can't go to those places yeah. you know what i'm saying so yeah. no nah, that's super dope yeah you man. gotta it's, it's all about finding like the different ways like if you if you fixating on one big payday then you've already fucked up because mm -hmm. it's like that's never how it's gonna be and that's in any business like you know what I mean? even in like if you have all your eggs in one source of stream of income basket you're, right. you're fucked up you know right. what I mean but it's like if you're like alright I got merch I'm finna uh, maybe I'm gonna try and do you know a couple verses I'm gonna try and um, you know what I mean busk if, you, if you're playing like a live instrument shit like that like I'm a DJ whatever like whatever it is like you find a way to make as much money in the 48 hours that you're in a place right. as possible you know what right. I mean as much connections as possible maybe you're like reach out to a restaurant you're like all right, like, hey, I'll shout you out and tell everyone to come here. You know, can you give me 50% off? It's like, mm -hmm. all right, well, now food expenses are cut down, whatever. Like, whatever right. way you could cut costs and make profit, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Y'all better listen up, bro. Y'all niggas be so stuck out here, bro. Look what, look what this man doing. You feel me? Like, no, for sure, for sure. Um, so, December 4th, uh, you made an IG post that you performed in 15 countries, and you did 142 shows. Um... That shit hella clean, man. Just, you know, like I said, coming from somebody from the Bay, yeah. um, it's it's really a blessing, you know, just yeah. to be able to go to them places and, you know, do that many shows and, you know, those 15 countries. Um, what's the journey been like 
practice with music? Um, it's been, I mean, it's been long, honestly. It's been hell long, like. Okay. I feel like we, we've been doing like this for hella long. Mm -hmm. And, and that's beautiful in some ways, but then it's like, damn, I've been doing this for how long? But like, like, uh, it's a slow journey, you know, yeah. for sure. But I feel like, I feel like, you know, when, when, when you look up, you realize how far you come, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I feel like we, like me, myself, us, the three of us, and then FNG as a whole, like, like I see I can I can like look back and see the the hill, you know what I mean? Right. That, that has been climbed and like I don't know. We've all been doing this for like ten plus years, you know what I mean? And and um, yeah, it's just like you gotta you gotta keep your head down and keep working, you know what I mean? Because if you get caught up in like what am I, you know, what am I doing day to day type of thing? It's like you know you just gotta do the work, you know right. what I mean? And, and uh, Cause then when I when I do look up, I realize like a lot of niggas actually look up to us, you know, and are fans of us, and and and, and um, you just got to keep pushing that that line, you know right. what I mean? So yeah, yeah, no, for sure, man. Um, yeah, that's that's a hundred, bro. Mm -mm. <laughs> for sure, for sure, bro. Um, so you know, you blend hip hop and ja uh, R and B and jazz. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about your, you know, your rap beginnings. You know, uh, what you listen to in your household and what inspired that. Um, shit. Uh, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I listen to all kinds of shit. I played instruments. I was in jazz band and stuff like that. Like, um, and then I don't know. I just like I've. I've always like wanted to do music. Like, I, I never did anything but music, and then, and I, I've always like I don't like doing shit alone. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't think it's very fun to make music alone. You know, or perform music alone. Like to me, like and music is fun. So I, you know, I want to have fun doing it. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, and 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 my sound just came from like really that. From like that's why the first album was Communal Healing is like it was like. You know, it's just like it's just not fun for me to do shit alone, and it's like, and also like you don't win alone, like you can't you can't yeah. win alone. So, you know, that's 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 really like where everything stems from. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk about attending, you know, NYU, uh, graduating, and just living in New York. It was, I, I, I'm very blessed to have gone to NYU to be able to to, to do that. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. I, I feel hella lucky, um, and I'm hella glad I moved to New York because that's what made me realize, like, damn, the Bay Area really is not shit. Respectfully, you know what I mean? Like, nah, for real, for real. And <laughs> like, so you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, <laughs> like, I was just so small-minded. I was like, you know, everything, like, everything. It made me realize, like, the scale of everything I was talking about was hella small. You know what I mean? And and it just like. Yeah, just expanding my worldview, you know, and that's why I encourage everybody to get out some way, somehow, just, you know, you can come back, but it's like, just understand that the world is bigger than the Bay Area. Right. I think, I think because of how hyper-localized we are, like, people be forgetting that shit. They be yeah. forgetting that, like, there is a, a whole world out there. Right. Literally. You know, so. Literally. And that's why I appreciate certain um, social media platforms, like a TikTok, because yeah. you can see so many people, yeah. you know what I'm saying, over like an Instagram. We only see people we know on there. Right, yeah, You know exactly. what I'm saying? Occasionally, you know, you get some fans and shit like that, that, that you know, that you that follow you and shit like that. Mm. Yeah, of course, there's people that you don't know, but you get to really see everything. Yeah. And it's like, man, like, you write, people forget how big the world is, man. Like, just even New York, like New York is super dope. I've never been, but just seeing it, bro, like from the fashion, from the, you know, um, all the opportunities they have out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's, it, I just, it's, it's just super dope to me, man. Like, it's nothing like the Bay Area. Shut the fuck up, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> that literally sounded like a propeller. Like, damn, bro. <laughs> Like, he act like he never been outside before, but yeah, bro, <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like, yeah, nah, I want to go to New York, man. Like, yeah. just, just the... You should go, for yeah. sure. I recommend it. Mm-hmm. And, mm -hmm. like, I think that, like, 
being out there like a unif you know it made me feel stronger right. connected to the bay you know what i mean because that was the first time i also realized like damn i really am like hella bay i'm hella different like you know what i mean because you go out there and it's like you realize we really are different we are di like hella niggas would be like damn like you really got something that like i've never seen before right like, ooh, right ooh, you know what i mean and like i feel like that that made me understand like the power that we have you know what i mean it makes you realize like wow we're, we're small but also we have hella power we are hella cool like oh, yeah, a sure. lot of people are like damn i didn't know that came from the bay you know what mm -hmm. i mean Woo, like and yeah and like me you know it's, it's a hub and um yeah i mean that, that shit you know gave me connections out there that then i was able to like bridge that gap you know what i mean right. and, and so like fng formed in new york um because i i brought them and like ozer and cine and basically like mm -hmm. uh, most of fng like we did a, a show out there yeah shout like, out them man you yeah. know what i mean so um yes yeah, like you, you know you could use other places to like gain traction in your area like i said you know what i mean because it's a lot of big artists that have never left the state of California. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they're running the same circuit, and that's dope. You know what I mean? But then, then you could kind of like some people they don't even think like no one in their team is ever saying like, hey, let's go to New York and, right. and fuck with New York and we'll do it. But you know what I mean? And, and then they hear that sound, they're like, whoa, what is that? Set? You know right. what I mean? What is yeah. that? I never heard nothing like that. I never right. seen no dancing like that. You know what I mean? That's a fact. We got our own little dance, own Everything. little like. I went to Portland. And we was just hiking type shit. And I seen mm. this girl, and she was like, y'all from the Bay, huh? <laughs> like, it's like, motherfuckers just could just tell, because it's just like the cadence, the sweat, yeah. all that shit. Like, it's just like, you you could just tell for mm. real, bro. And it's like, the Bay is special, but I do want us to branch out so people can see how special we are. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, for sure, man. So, um, talk about being from San Francisco. Uh, Filmo, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. Because, you know, I had a lot of people talk about their experience being in the city. Talk about yours. I mean, it's my, like, it's my home. I don't know, like, I don't, like, I, like, I, I didn't think about it until I moved to New York, you know right. what I mean? Because everyone I knew was from San Francisco, mm -hmm. so, like. I didn't realize that I had, like, a different type of way about me until moving somewhere else. Mm -hmm. and like, I never really met nobody like you right. type of thing. Like, but I feel like... I feel like um, the city made me... Like, the, the way I operate and the way I maneuver, it all comes from, like... You know the city is a hella small right. area. You know what I mean. And you you could you could move around in me in very different pockets right. very quickly. And you you know what I'm saying. And, and if you really are paying attention to what's going on, it's hella moving pieces and and shit like that. And so I feel like that really that formed like who I you know who I am, my understanding. And then you know being from the Mo like that, like being young like you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm 25, so like. I feel like it, the Mo is like, especially where I'm from, like uptown, like ground zero for gentrification. So like, yeah, I really like, and I didn't realize it, you know what I'm saying, until like, again, like really studying and understand what's going on. But like everything that's happening everywhere in the world, like basically I lived in the center of where it like fully first started, like the modern gentrification mm -hmm. fully started. You know what I mean? And that shit is the like same thing. Yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? Like it's like, like every problem that a lot of people are facing worldwide, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit happened in my neighborhood first. Right. So it's, you know, it's crazy. It's like nothing that I grew up with exists anymore. You know what I mean? And like, and um, it, it makes you realize like the power of documentation and footage is like, like there's hella shit like that, like, will watch or that will like you know what i mean go back and watch this like if that didn't exist i would have forgot forgotten that right it happened, right you know what i mean the power of documentation and storytelling what y'all are doing like mm -hmm. it's like because places are as powerful as people right and 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 the place like doesn't exist mm -hmm. and like i mean that so respectfully you know what i mean i think a lot of people would be mad at that but like mm -hmm. film does not exist anymore like it, it like it isn't a place you right. know what i mean like 
it is in people's minds and people's hearts but like it's re- like the neighborhood that is the filmo does not exist mm-hmm. you know what i mean you go there and it's like not if you knew any place doesn't exist anymore right. if you knew people they probably don't live there anymore you know what i'm saying so it's it's all in like storytelling and um documentation and history and like the basically ancestors of the place you know right. what i mean like and the more i like get older the more i realize how true that is you right. know what i'm saying like it's like it feels like uh, I'm telling a story of like a land that existed 400 years ago. Right. But it was eight years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it is like none of it exists. And you watch like um, the Thizzler, uh block report, Thiz Nation block report. And it's like literally like it's a, it's a, it's a whole other place. It's, mm-hmm. like re- it's like watching a v- film about fucking a lonely land. Like mm-hmm. it's like, damn, this is this is not the same place at all. You know what I mean? So that shit is hella crazy to be from that ground zero. Like, and that's, I feel like, you know, and they can speak on it too, but like, I feel like that's what it's like to be from San Francisco also. It's like nothing exists anymore, but us and our stories. And that's like, to me, like, that's why the art we make is so important because it's like, we're walking that line of like, we understand what it was like and we're here now. So we also understand what it is. Right. You know what I mean? And like, San Francisco's changing and like at the end of the day like you can't like I can't be mad that like the people who just moved in across the street from me don't know the history if the history is not documented so it's on us to document it you know what I mean and like because then going to New York like you said like going to Brooklyn it's like it's the same thing you feel me like where Jay-Z is from Marcy like that shit it don't look like what he was describing yeah but I was hyper aware because Jay-Z wasn't the biggest artist ever in the world and Biggie Smalls, one of the biggest artists in the world ever, described it with their words and with their videos. So I, un- I had an understanding. Right. And so people, you know, you would be like, damn, that's not really, like, this is not how it used to be. And most right. people understand that. But I feel like with Frisco, it's like, it's, it's on us. You know what I mean? And that's what we're trying to do because there's some documentation, but there could be a whole lot more of, like, right. what it's like to be a, a person growing up in San Francisco. You yeah. know? And, and, and I feel like... You know that's you know that's part of why I'm so excited for the the Sutra album because it to me it like represents like we represent three different facets of San Francisco and also right. like so y'all all from the city then okay yeah. okay yeah. honestly I don't know how to meet people who aren't from San Francisco mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know how to do it right. like everyone I know is from San Francisco right yeah yeah no but, yeah. for sure man um, just you know because I'm from Richmond right. Yeah. Just going to San Francisco, I just feel like it was always different from y'all having big ass hills. <laughs> like it's like the streets look so different than ours. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, how do people? I was like, how the fuck do people live over here? Like, you know what I'm saying? Being younger, I always thought it was like just Powell Street. Cause we we just go we just go shopping. Like we was never like you feel me? Like yeah. none of my I ain't, you know I ain't no hella niggas that's from San Francisco. You like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't even know y'all niggas had hoods and shit. Like right. it was sound crazy. But like no, I said, I'm from Richmond. Most, that's hella people be saying that. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Like I ain't noticed until I got older. I'm like, bro, y'all got you know Sunnydale hella shit, niggas. Been, you know what I'm saying? But it's just um, yeah, y'all got a super you know interesting type of built and city. You know what I'm saying? But um, just me and different people like it's always I always meet different, like dope people from there you know what I'm saying yeah. like from Young Bari you know what I'm saying uh, Thunder Man we had a dope conversation you know what I'm saying like yeah. it's dope people and it sucks that gentrification fucked that up like fucked up the you know the city and shit like that and it's crazy we kind of having that problem out here too like um like I, I was in the hood the other day. I seen some white people just jogging, you know, just jogging and shit. I'm like, what? The, I ain't never seen y'all. I ain't never seen y'all over here. Not like that, you know. I got white friends and shit, but I'm like, I ain't never seen y'all over here before. So it was just different. So I was yeah. kind of feel like Richmond gonna be like that Absolutely. eventually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Motherfuckers moving in. I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that shit is fucking crazy, man. Um, so let's talk about you. Just you know, being adopted. Um. A black boy and a white family, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a um, 
it's a it's kind of a touchy subject because it's kind it's kind of like you know we have those families where they adopt black you know black kids and they take their time to learn about our blackness which is super important um our hair our skin our culture etc um and they encourage you know the child to explore who they are but then you do have those parents where they don't you know they don't even try um Cause it's kind of it's, it's like it's kind of crazy how you can't try. Cause it's like you you can't really raise a black child and not see color. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and acknowledge like, hey, my child is black. I need to know certain things. I need to ask questions. And this goes for even like the white people that have biological kids from like a you know like a black man or a black woman. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, they don't know our experience. It don't really matter how you know down you is. You know yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you got those people. Um, you know, um, it's it's just kind of crazy. Um, so, what was your experience just growing up in that environment? I mean, honestly, you just summed it up hella well. But yeah, I mean, it's like you know, being in the system and and everything. Like, I mean, I, you know, every story is is hella unique. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I I know all my birth siblings and my birth moms and shit so like you know i like really like i grew up in a community so it was like, like it was like it was more like you know i had like a whole community raising me type mm-hmm. of thing which i'm hella you know lucky for and yeah, hella, sure. hella thankful for but you know it's definitely things that were like my, my biggest shit came from like I I got adopted and a lot of people that I know, you know, and, and came up with didn't. You mm-hmm. feel me? So my biggest shit was always like my guilt from that. From like I was able to like, you know, one be raised by by parents and two like have I was still connected to my birth family. You yeah. feel me? So I like don't get that. I yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like I, I always felt like I needed to like help the people who who didn't have the opportunities I had and I like. You know, I would see shit going down, and I was like, well, that could have been me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and and that's like really the shit about being adopted, being in foster care, like um, going in the system is like, you always are living like, like parallel universe type of shit. Like, it's like, what would happen if, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like if, if, if none of this happened, how would I be? Like, dude, Mm -hmm. so, and like, you know, that, I do think about that for better or for worse. Like, I think about like you know the man I am and, and who I am and like not to make the mistakes like my, my pops made. You feel me and like um, try and help people who are who you know are, are like me and could go a way that they shouldn't maybe or, or that I think they shouldn't. You know I, I can't judge nobody's life, but like right. you know what I'm saying it's like um, I like I never let it like be an excuse for my actions. The mm-hmm. fact that I like came from trauma and struggle you know what i'm saying like right. I, I like I, you got to work on that because i see a lot of people slip into that well you know you feel me like that's that's the life that i had and da, 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 you know what i'm saying so like i just always try and be like well like i had people hella people who love me who want me to do better you feel mm-hmm. me and that's like that's a hard ass decision to to make because like sometimes i don't feel like love because i, I you feel me? Like I was giving up, you know what I'm saying? Place and system. But it's like, it was, I have an understanding that it was so that I could be like a better man and have right. more resources. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, but that's just me. Like, it's like everybody is different and everybody's circumstance is different. And everybody's so outlook is different, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's the other thing about being from the city is like, I, I think, like I said, like, I, my pops is also from the city from the neighborhood that I'm at, and that's part of the reason I, like, that I went to, um, you know, live with him, and it's like the city raised me in a lot of ways, you know what I'm saying, and so I was able to, like, keep that, you know what I'm saying, like, I, ha- I just had hella, hella pillars and hella guidance, you right. know what I'm saying, <clears throat> and I'm, like, I'm forever grateful for that, you know what I'm saying, because mm-hmm. I think that's the key difference you know what I mean and um yeah you know what I mean it's like 
all I could do was recognize that for me to right. try and instill that in others. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and um, you know that's that's what we try and do, like a feminine group. You know, in terms of our spaces and shit like that. But yeah, I mean, there was definitely like there were hella moments in my life that, like, you know, I wouldn't be who I was, like, you know, without everyone in my family. You right. feel me? My white parents, my birth mama, my birth family, you feel me? Like, different um, group homes and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, because you gotta, you you got, like, you know, and I could, always, I could tell often when there's other people in the room who come from that background, because you know, you have to, like, wiggle in, like, literally they tell you, you know what I mean? Because, like, the goal is to get placed, you feel me? Right. If you're in if you're in the care system. So it's like they place you with the Latin family, you have to be able to adapt and, and what to do. So mm -hmm. um, Yeah, but it's a it's you know, I just keep the mind state of love like the highest. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so last year on Father's Day you posted about, you know, not having a relationship with your biological father and feeling anger towards um mm -hmm. towards him. But you also said how you have the best pops in the world, uh your adopted dad, right? Um Yeah, so with having such a loving father, do you still long for that love from your biological father? Um I hate that nigga. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um, right. It's times like like I talked hella with Stunna about mm -hmm. it, you know, because he 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 connected with his pops, yeah, I seen whatever, that, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's like sometimes I'm like, do I want to do this with you? But like, I, like, I, nah. I mean, I don't know. That's you know, I go back and forth. Like I have conversations about it, but at the end of the day, like first and foremost, like I have a pops, right? That's my pops. Mm -hmm. I have two moms. You feel me? They're both amazing in in their own ways. And so, like, it's not like I'm looking for for like more love or more whatever. It would be to like understand a part of me that I come from, you know, right? Whatever, the, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's like when I hear shit about him, it's like I definitely don't, you know. I'm I'm nervous to meet him and, and find myself in him because right. he's, you know, from from jump he was everything I didn't want to be mm. about a man. You feel me? Right. Yeah, yeah. Shit, all you can do is respect it for real. I yeah. mean, some shit people just don't want it. It's, I'm good, basically, what you're saying. Um, but um, all I can say is, man, thank God you were adopted by amazing people, you yeah. know, because the system is so fucked up and there's so many horror stories that you hear when it comes to foster care or just being adopted yeah. into just families. It's just thankfully that you, you got a good one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll say, like, my biggest shit is, like, Kids are the most oppressed people. Mm. And and everybody always gets hella, like, many when I say that. But it's like, we do not protect kids. Like, there's no laws that protect kids. And, know. like, all of the other shit that happens systemically stems from the lack of, like, safety of kids. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like, and what I mean by that is, like, if you, if you work in the system, have been in the system, like, kids don't get a say. Mm. Right, and the and the, the reasoning for that is, well, they're kids, right? Right, but it's like any other oppressed group, you, you know, you'd be like, well, that's sexist, you right. know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, they are kids, so they they maybe are less developed, but it's like they know, yeah, you know what, what? I'm saying? Like, I knew, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you you know, and 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 even if they make the wrong choice, so what? Like. Hella people make the wrong choice. Adults you know what I mean? make the wrong like, choice. Adults make the wrong choice what? all the time. <laughs> all the time. People forty like, plus. Like yeah, exactly, nigga. Like we had a president who was seventy. We have two presidents who are seventy who don't know what they're talking about. Like exactly. And and basically everything in society is anti-child. And right. and then you look at language. It's like all right, you wanna you wanna uh, you a nigga and you trying to like uh, you feel me? Get on your girl. Stop acting like a little girl. All right. You a racist white man. Hey boy, what are you doing? You look at language, it's like the biggest the biggest shit is if you want someone to feel oppressed, you make them feel like a kid. Right. Mm, because kids yeah. are the most oppressed people in society. Right. And 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 you see it more. Like I understand it more because I, I work and, and come from that field. But mm -hmm. it's like kids don't have no say. They are marginalized, they're pushed to the side, and then they become adults who feel like, well, I went through it, so they go through it, you feel right. me? But it's like, that's something I try and work on. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, how do we empower kids? Right. You know what I mean? Like, mm, they know what they want, kids? they have a voice, you feel right. me? So, let them, you know, 
let them do it. And it's like, it's all, it's all arbitrary. Like the science that used to be hella sexist, hella racist, it's like, you know, oh, they can't drive till they're 16. Why not 15? Why not 17? Right. Well, your brain chemistry. It's like there's real science to it, you mm -hmm. feel me? But it's also like a lot of it is just like we're putting things in place so kids have less agency to control their narrative. You know right. what I mean? And you see it the most with kids who, you feel me, like have harder, more difficult family situations where like they have no control right. for their life. Mm -hmm. And we say, well, it's because they're a kid, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that that really like is not a good enough excuse for like, you know, this person has no control over where they can live. Right. You know, who, 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 who they go home to, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, man. If CPS is called, like, the kid has no say. Right. You feel me? All that shit's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy, man. Kids deserve respect, too. Absolutely. Especially in the black community, we always want to be like, nah, sit down, you a kid. Or don't, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Or don't listen to what the kids say. Even with dealing with, like, you know, being touched, pedophile, yeah. you know, shit yeah. like that. Pe people... It's like you don't believe a kid or, you know, somebody can touch a kid and only get a certain amount of years. But, right. you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, what kind of shit is that? I never yeah. understood nothing like well, that. That's what I'm saying. It's like we don't listen. We don't be we listening, don't listen to, the to the kids. kids. So there's no environment for a kid to be like, hey, this, you feel me? Like, literally, you know what I mean? We don't give kids no agency. And then those kids grow up and be like, fuck everybody yeah. because how you treated me. Yeah. That's the and problem. Then and then they... To the next generation of kids, exactly. like, yeah, well, I went through that shit, so you gonna go through that shit. Like, right, none of, none of this shit makes sense. We gotta break the break the cycle. Somehow, literally, somehow. literally, man. I'm so glad you said that because I feel that so much, man. Like, if you have a kid, listen to him, man. My my mom always gave me a voice, and I was and I'm so glad she did because you know, like I said in, in our in the black community, shut up, be quiet. You you a kid. Yeah. No, nah, I was always able to talk, speak my mind. Yeah. And now that I'm grown, I speak my mind. And you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that Absolutely. shit is a skill. Like, yeah. motherfuckers Absolutely. don't speak their mind. No, because they couldn't. They so couldn't. Now they can't. Exactly. Like, yeah, 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 no, for sure, man. Respect kids. Um, the Rent Check Collaborative album, man, yeah. meant to shine light on the struggles, values, and perspectives of those present, made up of over 50 artists, right? Something like that? Probably. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, at this point, I trust you more than I trust me. Okay, cool. I, 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 okay, I did my research, so I'm sure yes. I'm right. Uh, 15 tracks produced by you, Mike Evans Jr., and Baghead. Talk yeah. about it. Mike Mike was there for sure. Um, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, Rent Check is, uh, Rent Check is Mike's brainchild. It's a TV show. Um, that he made with Serial for the Kids. It's, it's a beautiful like sketch series kind of thing. He's a he's a genius, and he basically he basically he's an amazing actor and comedian. But deep down, like everybody, he wants to be a rapper. <laughs> yeah. Nah, but he he basically he like you know like the the I think that now there is less, but growing up there was such a tie especially in the black community between comedy and, and music yeah. and so his idea was like Let, let's make an album to to document basically what's going on in the show which is what it's like to live in frisco right now and um yeah me, he had me and baghead executive produce it um and you know it that was kind of uh the so like Sucho, which is us three, like I would say that that was like the the origin story or the what's before origin story, like the you feel me, like the, the prelude, yeah, the prelude yeah, yeah. to Family on a Group, but Renchek was like the catalyst. Mm -hmm. So it was like a lot of us just making music, make having sessions, and then you know out of those sessions kind of birthed this community that's right. like larger than FMG that was just like, hey, we're just kind of like get our shit off you know what i mean and, and so that was like 2021 coming out of covid um and yeah i mean i'm hella i'm hella grateful that he he trusted me with that you know because um it's a really beautiful project and uh it's it's just a beautiful representation like i said like documentation it's a beautiful documentation of like the sounds that are coming out of the bay area right, right now right know? And um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, for sure. And I'm glad y'all are doing that because it's like just looking on certain platforms, say cheese and shit. They be like, the bay don't got shit. The bay, we, yeah. woo, woo, down. In North California, Southern California don't got nothing. But it's just like, bro, you have these collectors of people that are making dope music. And it's not just murder, murder, kill. Let me, let me stand over a nigga. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's dope music. And I hate that we get overlooked for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the shit they promote is that type of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But there are dope artists, dope artists out here, underground shit. You know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. super dope, bro. Yeah. And um, I want people to see it. I want people to yeah. see it, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, and 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 that again, that show to me was like another thing of like you know you could do it, you know what I mean? Like the, it, like that's a it's a good ass show, you right. know what I mean? And um, it's funny as fuck, you know what I mean? And 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 they really did it from the ground up, right. you know what I mean? So that it's like very cool. Where can we watch it? Um, it's on YouTube at Brent Check, it's on the Brent Check series YouTube. Um, I, I believe there's ten episodes, right? Twelve. I'm not in it. They're both in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but I mean the album. The album's on all stream platforms. Um, it's called Rent Check by Rent Check. Um, yeah, it's like 50 plus artists. I think there were like over 200 artists total at all the sessions and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, and yeah, to me, it just it symbolizes the beginning, or or a part of the Bay Area Renaissance. You know what I mean? Which is like what you're saying, which is like, there's hella dope stuff coming out of the Bay. Literally. And it all, it sounds hella different. Mm -hmm. It's hella cool. And like, um, you just kind of got to find a way to plug in. And I think Renchek, you know, um, Family in a Group, Frisco Days, which is, um, say in De La City's project, like there's a bunch of projects out there, which is like, hey, you can find some stuff. It don't all sound the same. It's cool stuff, you know, you might get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of it is just, yeah, unifying because like it's going, it's hard for people to make waves in the Bay on their own. But right. when you come together, it's like, you get something powerful for sure. Hell yeah, and, I, and I'm glad I found the feminine group and just y'all, cause just like, like, like I said, people always say we don't come together too. And I feel like that in certain, you know, I kind of feel like that. Sometimes we don't come together, you know, especially with the, the hood niggas. You know what I'm saying? They don't never want to work together and shit like that. So to see everybody come together yeah. is super dope to see. And it shows that, you know, some people are doing that. Maybe not everybody, but somebody is doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people not letting the politics or they're not even in the politics to, you know, deal with the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's super cool, man. Um, talk about Sutro. You know, you guys are a rap group. You know, uh, how'd that come about? You got the answer. Okay, so Sutro came about because DJ Say had a studio on Market Street. It was pretty cool because he was super underground. Literally, it was under the ground. You got to go under the ground to get there. It was a really good movie scene. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so Aft and Say were recording together there a lot. Um, and one day I booked a session with Af to do some songs to his beats and we did one song and then we started another song but then we decided we'd all get on the song together like rap on the song and um, we were like wow this is fire and then we just kept do kept running that back like let's do another song do another song came back the next day did like three songs and we did that for like I don't know, like a month or something, and we had like a bunch of. 2020? 2020, yeah. Um, and uh, we pretty quickly kind of had like eight or nine songs and started making music videos. And then Af told us we should all go to LA and just kind of like create, you know? So we did. And uh, that's pretty much how Sutro got started. That was in 2020. And then through that, the, we went to New York with everybody and created FNG. And when FNG was created, that just sort of like raised the foundation for everything we had all been doing for you know our whole lives. And we started doing big shows, and now we have a big album. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a, it's it's been a lot of layers to the mm-hmm. process, but we're still kind of doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, how'd you come up with the name Sutro? 
Well, I say uh, you can see Sutro. We have a song on our first EP called Sutro. Um, we're in the hook. F was saying, uh, man in my city, see me everywhere like Sutro. That's kind of like a symbol for us because you could see it anywhere in San Francisco. You probably see it from here, honestly. If you got a view of San Francisco, you could probably. So it's like a, you know, just a metaphor for, uh, you know, this, this, the stuff that we're doing, which is like, you know, all these shows in different places. Um, you know, you could, there's 17 of us, so you could probably see one of us any given day just randomly in the city kind of thing. And Sutra also has like three prongs on it. So it kind of represents like three of us. So, um, yeah, and just like our perspectives, we all kind of like come from different parts of the city. So when we come together, we kind of give like the full San Francisco experience kind of from our point of view. Yeah, so like, you know, we hear us on the track, you hear Av, you hear me, you hear PG. So it's like, you know, just three different perspectives symbolize the Sutro Towers, you know, it's us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even though y'all in a group, would y'all say y'all separate, separate artists as well? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's like the power behind it is us, you know, rocking and having our own brands. Um, basically, uh, we all do our own thing individually, and then when we come together as Sutro, it's like a, you know, like a mega group kind of thing. It's like this ultimate collaboration. It's, it's sick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it's like um, we all have catalog. You know, we've all been doing music for like 10, 15 years a piece, and so I think that. Um, at first we weren't even like on some like rap group stuff it was just like maybe like make an album make a movie you know what i mean like just create bigger projects together and um and then it kind of naturally was like we're a group now just one day we were kind of like we got i think we got booked or something you know once you get booked then you start thinking about it like that you're like oh okay well I guess we should do this this way now and it works out um better that way too because this album is uh it's really a perfect kind of like mix of all three of our different sounds i think mm -hmm. and kind of like we all contribute uh differently to the project whether it be in the music or like in life because we also do like trivia nights throughout the city um in different places and uh, we do a lot of different just like live performance, you know, so our presence, we like just create our presence in different ways over and over and over again, that, which grows the brand and, in, you know, in turn, like pushes the music because you can't just drop music, oh, you know. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I think that that's kind of what's cool about it is we sort of effortlessly all kind of do our part, right. you know. Yeah. 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 Um, with being a rapper yeah. and being a white guy. Yeah. How do you feel about people saying that white people can't rap? I've never heard anybody say that. Really? Not to me. <laughs> but like... <laughs> no, they just, they, they, they're bad at rapping, yeah. I mean, that's probably true. Most white people are pretty bad at rapping, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's fine. It doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I always felt like there was really no... I don't know, like... No, not even just just race. Like it don't even fucking matter. I feel like if you got that shit, you got that shit. Like mm -hmm. I never felt like I ain't for listening to him because he white. What the fuck? Right. Like. I, like, like, I mean, this is kind of a controversial opinion. <laughs> One, I would say like, I, like to me, honestly, DJ say is 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 uh, kind of kind of our hidden sleeper. I would say of FNG. But otherwise, if, if, yeah, he goes, he just goes crazy sometimes. But otherwise, like, and this is no disrespect to my other brothers, if you put a gun to my hand, like, all right, someone, someone's got to spit the most, like, intricate verse, I, I put it in PG's hands, and if not, I put it in Frax's hands, like, and I feel like part of that is, like, I don't know, like, you, like, because it's hip-hop, like, and, and like, you know, when you're talking really, like, you not no like fake ass like I wear Wu Tang shirt and I'm a 40 year old man in hip hop, but like <laughs> this music like, you know what I'm saying that this is a real like person who studies like people's catalogs and shit. It's like you gotta you really gotta know what time it is because right. you can't just show up. You feel me like, and not really you know understand what's going on to me because then I then I do judge you because right. I'm like come on man like what's going on? But I feel like it's like with music it's like you just say like say something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean like. 
and that's part of the problem with the with the bay is like everyone's like well we just gotta say this because you know like you were saying like about the city you was like i didn't even know that y'all had hoods mm-hmm. I, I hate that niggas don't know that yeah but i also want people to understand like that there's just regular niggas in the city too mm-hmm. you feel me and like and um i feel like a lot of people feel like well we got to talk about that shit because nobody's talking about that you know nobody respects us mm-hmm. and i'm like you know it's like i re- I respect, you know, and, and want that message to be pushed because it do exist. But it's also like, bro, like, I'm just a nigga that lives in the city, is from the city, that got the city-ism. But, you know, I just, like, I like to, like, go get a burrito. You feel me? I like to go smoke in the park. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like to do, right, you know, shit. You feel me? And so, like, I feel like you got to just be intentional. And I feel like, we as a trio and we individually, like Gabriel was saying, have a catalog that's intentional. And to me, like, that's that's my biggest shit is, like, are you being intentional with the music that you're making? I love just seeing people just being themselves. Because, like you said, I mean, I don't want to see a motherfucker talk about how they grew up like this, poverty, and you living in the hills. Right. What the fuck are you even talking about? Exactly. Make like, sense. yeah, like... I, I, this shit don't make no sense. Or you talking about yeah, killing other people and you ain't never ever killed nobody in your life. What yeah. do you even? T- What's the point of rapping about that shit? It's also like, bro, you have got shit that's, that's going on. Like literally, literally all in the world. Like, you feel me? Like, bro, like, it's literally all people. I think shit. who are still dealing with like, well, I'm like still profiled. I'm still this. I'm still that. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like. There's a thousand stories to tell. All right. Just mm-hmm. tell your story, and exactly. if you do it authentically, you can't like you can't fold or fumble. Like some people might hate on you, some people might you're not this, you're not that, mm-hmm. but someone is gonna hear it and be like, "Wow, mm-hmm. that's exactly what I'm going through." Right. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. upper middle class, and I am struggling with like addiction, and you know whatever it is, like whatever yeah. the story is, it's like, bro, there's someone else in the world. Who's dealing with that yeah, shit? Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the, and honestly, that's that's what we mean. Cause the more people hear, I just I, I just had to hide, hide. You know what I mean? And then they're like, okay, that's all. If I wanna if I wanna be it like that, I gotta do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I you know and again it's like that shit is real for a lot of niggas. So right. I don't. Yeah. I, I'm not saying stop doing it. I'm saying like stop doing it if it's not you. Because right. because. I think that's why people like family in a group. Like, we not phony. Right. Nobody's like, them niggas is weak, them niggas is da, da, da. It's just we ourselves. Right. Exactly. Like, we got some, some niggas that, that is more streetwise. We got some niggas that is not streetwise at all. Right. <laughs> but we all, we're just, we're FNG. Like, we right. represent, and like, that's the three of us too is like, we represent Frisco being able to be in all of Frisco. You feel right. me? Like, like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable being there, but I, I could I, I could maneuver through like pack huts and the wealthy neighborhoods and shit like that. Like I feel cool being in the sunset or whatever, and not just like, from a street perspective, but from a like this is a this is my okay, city. Okay. Right. You know. I see myself mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. So and I feel like that's that's true of all three of us. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? In terms of like, you know, when you really come from a place, especially Frisco, like that's how it is. Like. We are a multicultural place. You right. feel me? And like, it be niggas. You feel me? From from really from the Jets, it's like it's San Francisco. So you you feel me? So it's like you all had some Asian partners. Maybe you wasn't. I want wasn't, this the whole beta, like. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So like, if niggas, you know what I'm saying? This ain't the you feel me? This ain't other places like. It's. It's, it's like, there's no like place where it's like, oh, you're not gonna see no one but this type of person. Because you, know, like, you can see the city from right here, it's not that far. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's like, just just be your authentic self and, and you know, and that's also how like you shine more. Like you look at Larry June, that's a real authentic nigga who like represents himself, but he speaks to people because he's being authentic. So it's right. like- Right, and you can feel it too. You can feel somebody being fake. Right. You can feel somebody being real. So he's authentically himself, which is authentically being real, which means that like, nigga, I feel his shit, nigga, first. But 
nigga like niggas who live in Marin who you feel me drink kale smoothies right. and all his shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's a fact, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But also niggas in the deep east who really, really in the trenches and mm-hmm. you feel me they caught up looking left and right they feel his shit and that's you know, we talk about winning the bay and winning over the world that's how you win that's why that nigga's the hottest out right now it's literally it's like, if you talking one thing then some niggas is not gonna feel you and niggas who, who wanna feel you they might be funny themselves mm-hmm. you know, they attract the real their dream attracts the real right right and that's and, and, and hella other artists yeah like, Literally, like he not even rap about no shit, like you know, no weird shit, nor no, you know, no gangster shit. He just smoothies and hundred thousand dollar couches and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit play it. We love that. Like what's that's great. Exactly. How could you not love it? Like you know, two two thousand dollar cotton and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we love shit like that. Like. <laughs> no, nah, for sure, bro. Like, shout out Larry June, bro. Shout out Larry June, man. Yeah. Um, even like Lil Russell, you know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just talking to him on the podcast, like, bro, just regular nigga, just super humble, just being himself, and it's just like, bro, people come to him organically. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't have to do too much. He don't gotta act like somebody he not, cause he's just being himself, and people just love it. Honestly, that's the yeah. This is able to collaborate more because it's like it's not weird for a street ass dude to be on with a with a square ass dude because they both being themselves and they from the band. You feel me? It's, and like, you know, yeah, the Russell, Larry June, Stunna is very much like that. Like, you feel me? Like, and um, that's why like I, I rock with with them. You know, they're my brothers, but it's also like, like Gable said, like we trust each other. So it's, I understand we're gonna represent what we're what we're doing, what we're pushing, and that. They're speaking for themselves because they're authentically themselves. So I'm never. You feel me? If you're tripping off them, you're tripping off them because they're themselves. You feel me? That's you got to look inwardly. Right. You feel me? You can't you can't project on them because they're only giving you themselves. Right. Right. And, or I'm only giving you my. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact, bro. For sure, for sure. Um. So I'm not a group, man. We've had Cindy on here, Ozer. Yeah. Um, we heard their experience in a group. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, heard, no, we heard they experience it. We heard they experience. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, um, how is it just being a part of, you know, just many members and just talk about y'all's, y'all experience? Something that takes tons of TLC. Keep rolling, keep going. It, it it's a testament to all of our vision, the way that all of our vision and all of our love for each other, the way that we're able to consistently do events and curate different. You know, like if we're going to New York or something like that, like it's it's so dope to um, to be a part of something bigger than just you know an individual artist. And I feel like all of us see that, and we all try to like push that same kind of like energy whenever we're together kind of thing yeah i love family not a group um i think uh we have a lot of fun you know so all the kind of difficult parts of being in a really large group of people kind of balance out with the sort of once in a lifetime experience. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Like going to New York, right? Like it's not easy to go to New York at all. Um, like, it, like by yourself, you know what I mean? Like it's expensive. You got to know people. It's, the flight you know what i mean it's a totally different kind of uh clock out there so that that's kind of what did it for me because i we kind of like had a really good time in new york and did really good business in new york like four or five times with like 15 or 20 of us each time so i was kind of like wow that's pretty impressive um 
and I, I like that we kind of just rise to the occasion every time I would say that like one of the difficulties is probably like planning things you know because things just pop up and you kind of just gotta execute but I think that we're just kind of good at that and that's like why we're still doing it you know what I mean right that's all those fucking people bro like damn like yeah no it's crazy just get <laughs> even like here to getting here today yeah we had to figure it out yeah yeah, yeah man so i'm talking about all them damn people all each other is just super yeah dope. i think it's super necessary especially in the bay area we're kind of a symbol of like kind of like a shift in the culture of crabs in a, in a barrel kind of mentality out here for real um you look at a place like atlanta new york la detroit, detroit you see so much of like Unity. You know, people pulling back and giving like somebody who they fuck with like a one up kind of thing, or you know, just different people collabing that you never see. Like you know, like Bylug from Detroit. Those are all people from different parts of Detroit who came together, and now like everybody knows payroll. Everybody knows, you know, what I mean, all these different people type stuff. So, you know, like other places do it, but why don't we do it? You know, why haven't we decided to put our differences down in the Bay Area? And I feel like COVID was uh, another factor that really aided in the creation of family not a group because if there's no places to perform and there's no places to dj you can't even go outside it's like what do you do you got to rely on you know collaboration i feel like and that collaboration is was like the, you know the what created family not a group was you know this studio space me tapping in with af me you know pg tapping in with af to you know get into the studio and stuff like that um and yeah like it's just it's something to where it's kind of us shifting the mold or attempting to shift the mode out here for real because that's what we need we just need more collaboration yeah, yeah. we definitely need that bro and i, I wish this would would post what y'all doing you know what i'm saying because yeah, 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 right. yeah. yeah no no that's that shit that shit is super dope but shit what about everybody else i'm like yeah. damn like <laughs> no nah, i mean that's dope as fuck hell yeah somebody from that motherfucker yeah. but it's just like bro because they so focused on Post to certain people, I'm like, bro, but there are people out here that's art that, that's working together that has different type of sound that we want to see. I ain't gonna lie, that's really for me. You know what I mean? That's where all this shit came from. Is like I've always felt, you know, and I, I get hella love from the community, and I fuck with like FNG and our community and people who support me, and I, I'm forever thankful. But I always came with the mindset of like I'm different. Nigga, I'm, I, I'm making, you know, jazzy type stuff, whatever shit. So FNG came about like it was like it really for me was like no one's gonna do it, so I, I gotta do it. You feel me? Like no one's booking me. Okay, sh nigga, shut up, book yourself. You know what I mean? Okay, I booked the show, hit a venue. You know what I'm saying? We we, we uh, actually so we st we we took our first New York trip and like four days before me and Say and Baghead and Daylight La City planned a Halloween show and and booked me as the headlining act or it was Los Rockets was a special guest and I was the headlining act you feel me and it's like I was like okay that was tight you feel me like I, no one else is gonna book me you know what I mean no one else is gonna put me on yeah I'm a book I'm a book myself create our own platforms like it comes from the, you know, independent bear, get out the mud, but it also comes from, like, not spite, but, like, just, like, I can't, like, if I want to do this shit, I got to do it because, like, I can't rely on Thizzler to post me. Right. Because I look at what they're posting, I'm like, they're not going to post me. Right. And if they do, the niggas are going to say that I paid to be on there or some shit. Oof, you, know you know what I'm saying? Is. You know what he is. And, and it's like, I'm not even hating on nobody, like, and I tell everybody to tap in, like, yo, dude, you know, you could do it yourself. I believe in you. Yeah. Because... That's all it takes is like we book ourselves like we we are so our album is coming out on May, on May 10th and we booked our own release party which is a festival on Golden Gate Park you know what I mean it's an all ages free event y'all should come if y'all you know available yeah, yeah. and it's like it's like who else, like you know I'm from the Bay Area I'm not gonna get on outside lands yeah. who's gonna book me for a festival no one but myself right. so we yeah. booked ourselves for a yeah. festival you know what i mean and it's tight and it's no it's not like there's not like millions of dollars circulating and shit but it's like the more you do the shit yourself then niggas will be like oh maybe we should 
book them because right. that that's tight what they just did. And you know what I mean? And it's like, that's how you got to get it in the Bay Area. Like, a lot of niggas be like, well, if I just keep putting the shit out, they're still going to book me. It's like, nah, or, or so and so. Yeah, you got to do it yourself. Yeah. And eventually, you know, now it's like I go into rooms and be like, oh, I just seen that you did. I got to I gotta fuck with you. I was like, right. I was trying to fuck with you six years ago. <laughs> But, we'll but I can't be a hater. It's like, because yeah. now niggas tap in with me and I'm, I have to say the same thing. I'm like, if you can't book yourself, how am I going to book you? You right. know what I mean? You know? And it's not it's not a disrespect thing. It's a respect nah, thing. Nah, that makes sense, though. Because, because yeah. then I, you know what's going on. You know what the cost of a show is. So you understand what you're getting out of the show. You feel me? Like, And so that's what I tell all my young homies. Everything is like, Here's some small bars you could book yourself, mm -hmm. learn and build. And I'm not being no hater. I'm not being no whatever. I'm just saying, like, that's what worked for me. You right. feel me? Because if I give you the a, the alley oop, the, the A1, you know what I'm saying, whatever shit, it, it might fall badly for you because it's like you're not ready for, for that stage, for that whatever, because then you're going to get the show. You're going to do the show. It's going to be turned. And then what are you going to do next? Right. Because there's no one else throwing shows. Yeah. So start throwing your own shows. That's, so that's what we did. You know what I'm saying? Like. He's he he spins all over, you know. He's booking himself. Mm -hmm. He's performing all over. He's booking himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm booking myself. We're booking each other, and we put on our community. But it's like you, you can't just you can't like. There's no infrastructure in the bay. Right. So if you want to do it, you gotta do it yourself. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like we're examples of that. And you look at everyone. That's what they're doing. You know. Right. Right. And, and you do it enough, like Stunner was doing his own shit. Stunner and, and, and Say were doing their own shit together. Stunner and Gable, you know, all of it. It's everyone, everyone in the city was really doing fucking with each other. And now niggas is booking us because right. they understand what's going on. Yeah. You yeah, know? no, that's a fact. That same thing with like Vans and Weed. Was nobody fucking with us, so we right, had so to we, we had shit. to create our own right. shit. And then now, like you said, right, right. Maybe it wasn't ready. Right, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, they wasn't being no hater. They was just like, well, you got to figure it out and wiggle first. You know what I mean? Because it's like, otherwise it don't help nobody. It's like, okay, we're going to do a show. Nobody's going to show up. Nobody's going to make any money. It's like, nah, build yourself up. I'm going to build myself up. And then let's meet. Or I'm going to build myself up so that I, that you are willing, you understand and you're willing to reach down. Because like, like Say was saying, it's like in Detroit, they reaching down. But they also reach them up. Right. You gotta reach up. That's the biggest shit. It's like niggas feel like, well, I'm just making music in the bay, so someone's someone's gotta give me a hand. But you gotta reach your hands up. And that's that's what we all be doing, I feel all the time. It's like my hands is always up. I'm right. like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. You know? So yeah, yeah, that shit is super important. And anybody that's listening, man, help yourself at the end of the day. Cause if you help yourself, then you gonna for sure, for sure, man. Like, you gotta get that initial push going first. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Seven on red type shit. Yeah, that's how it go. Making it happen. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, nah, for sure. Y'all's doing a good, consistent job. Exactly. You know. You showing the the vision, you know. You you're able to display like you know what you want to do, and people see it. And like, oh, this is what they was talking about this this so many years ago. Okay, let me, you know, let me go on there and let me see what's up, type shit. Right. That's exactly, that's exactly. Um, so we see you being producer, making beats with Jay Bottles and Easy Bottles. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I forgot about that. Yeah, I did that with Too Easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> just just drinking heavily. <laughs> yeah, like, um, man, it's me, uh, too easy. Like you know, there are guys. So we just we just wanted to get creative and do you know just do you know. I feel like La Russell said it, you know, but like he just, we just put up hella shots. Mm -hmm. You know, we just I feel like we all just do as much as we can. Like. Um, so yeah, me and Too Easy, we just like we was just doing that, just Too Easy Tuesdays, making beats out of random stuff and mm -hmm. and shit. Um, yeah, it re it really didn't come from nowhere, mm -hmm. but but just I I really or we really fuck with Too Easy, you know, and um, yeah, they're hella talented. Um, they actually so our album that's about that's coming out, they produced all of the interludes on the album. 
Um, and they've been going crazy. Um, but yeah, <laughs> really it just came from like fucking around, like just trying to, you know. I don't like when you do this, you just, I'm just always thinking of, all right, well, let me try it. If right. it don't work, it don't work. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. no one remembers the stuff that doesn't work unless it's really terrible. And it's only really terrible if you're not doing a good job. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and that, I, I don't know how to phrase that better, but it's like, nah, you can't hella shit. That makes it you know what I mean? Like, hella niggas do hella shit that's not that great and no one cares. Literally. You know what I mean? No one is, because if you do the good thing, and they'll just be talking about that. You know what right. I mean? So that's really what it is. Is like, there's hella shit I've done that's just garbage. But no one's like... We oh. could all say that, though. Yeah, shit. that's my point. But it's like... <laughs> okay, I just play. I just play. No, 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 no. He's like, never done a That is a joke. That is a joke. That is a joke. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so it's, it's really just that. It's like, day was cool. Uh, we got busy. It took hella energy. Didn't have time, but... Them and, them and Frack actually just did a new one. I just like, you know, didn't have the time to do it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, really just shots every day. Just, you know, taking as many shots as possible. I'll take a shot. <laughs> you didn't take any shots today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Before we get up out of here, is there anybody y'all want to shout out? Anything? Please do so. Shout out to everybody that, you know what I mean, was a part of the album. Um, should I name them individually? Individually, first of all, shout out to A-Side. I feel like A-Side is the first person we should shout out. Um, production on Sutro. He kind of like molded the Sutro sound, I would say, with our first EP. He, cre- he uh, uh, produced all those beats. Uh, we kind of expanded for the Sutro album. Shout out to DJ Fresh. Shout out to Baghead, our brother. Um, shout out to Adiemi, Bruce Wayne. Adiemi produced Bruce Wayne. Shout out to Neff, the Pharaoh, Nump for being on Bruce Wayne. We got some crazy features. I don't know if I should. Are, are we going through the features right now? Well, this probably be, by the time this is out, be the out. album will be out. So, yeah, you know, off the top. On top of my head. Nah, shout out to Quipto. <laughs> shout out to. I'll wait till, till it dies down. Shout out to Equipto. Shout out to Mr. Fab. Shout out to Stoney. Shout out to J Wall. Shout out to uh, who else? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Marshall. Um, Rocky Rivera. G Val. AMK. AMK uh, Frack. Grando. Uh, Nick Fury. Cinny. Sunday, Ash, Journey B, The Reason, Love Tali, uh, Jen Set. Yeah, I think that was it. If y'all did, don't be mad at him, man. <laughs> Harry, Rup- shout out Rupesh, our manager. We have a manager now, and he's really great at managing. Yeah. It's finally, yeah. Uh, Shout out to Vance and Weed. Shout out Fern, yes. Jordan. And our our homegirl, Jordan, too. Oh, no. Her name is Jordan, right? Jay. Sorry, Jay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Aaron. Bib City Purity Wine. We did make a wine. Ah, what the fuck? Right. We were going to come bring the wine here. Hell yeah. Next, the third, May 3rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday, May 3rd. Yeah, we made a wine. It's good, too. It's some good wine. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yes. shout out everybody. Yeah, shout out Vans of Weed. Thank you for having us. No, nah, for sure, for sure, man. Um, Fire. This summer we throwing a um, barbecue slash kickball party. Word. Uh, basically, it's going to be a whole bunch of artists there that we interview. Basically, you get to network, play kickball, have some fun, eat some food, get drunk. You know, just vibe it. out. So, so make sure y'all, y'all come outside. 
That'll be dope as fuck. Oh yeah. Damn, that's so many people on one fucking team, no. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he hasn't even finished his shot. He's already. <laughs> but, hey, <laughs> look, look, man. Hey, man, say, man. This has been another say. And we out. Bye.